Step out and smile and start again Allow your body to live and to breathe Allow your mind the space to be I'm we are, I think we're on Labor Day weekend time here. We're just busy, kind of like taking care of little details. We're glad to see everybody, both in Zoom and here in the sanctuary. We have a nice showing in both places. Just a quick reminder that today is a communion Sunday. So if for any reason you're at home and you haven't already organized your elements for communion, feel free to use whatever is on hand, your cup of tea, your glass of water. If you happen to want to drink some wine this morning, feel free. And whatever sort of biscuit, bread, breakfast you might have on hand, that's great. And then I just want to double check here in the sanctuary. Raise your hand if you have your little tiny communion glass it looks like this okay everybody's got one great everybody's welcome to partake you don't have to not partake and then i'm just going to run through a few more announcements for the life of the community here at jackson community church and in the valley next week is september 11th and there will be observances both here in jackson and definitely at Schuler park I haven't really checked all the other schedules of all the other towns, but I know that they're sort of happening around the same time. In Jackson, they will be doing the parade, the Remembrance Parade, where they carry the very large flag. And they start at the covered bridge and they work their way around the village. In Schuler Park, there will be a gathering led by several clergy and other officials from the town also to remember that day. The following weekend, which I think is the 18th, I think that puts us on the 18th, the Saturday, we have two different teams, presumably. We know we have an Alzheimer's team walking over in Portland, or Portland, I believe. And then Jen's Friends is doing their hill climb up Cranmore the same morning. We presume that we are going to be having walkers from our church in both of those events and so if you would like to support or walk under the auspices of the church please let us know and we will help you get organized many members of the church are also going to be away this week on star island they can tell you more about it when they get back i'm sure they're going to give you glowing reports and tell everybody you should all come next year we're glad to be able to do so. It was not open last year due to the pandemic, but two years ago, a significant number of people had attended. So we're really glad to return and we'll let you know how it goes and encourage more of you to join us in the future. There are many chances both on Pine Mountain at Horton Center and or on Star Island to partake of wonderful retreats and organized spiritual activities. Deacons will be meeting, not this week, because most of uh, many of us are on Star Island, but the following Tuesday at seven o'clock, and then Wednesday, same week, we will be having our council meeting. So those are the administrative notes for the life of the church. Are there any other announcements that I did not catch anything that anybody wants to say here in the sanctuary uh, anything in zoom that i missed did anybody have anything you want to make sure i say no i think it looks good thank you sandy welcome sandy's one of our virtual deacons she's deaconing from ohio it's one of the gifts of zoom <laughs> that we can we can oh oh yeah go ahead meg Oh, I just, I knew there was something I wanted to say is that choir practice started again this morning. 
So the choir is going for the fall. We have a delightful, not very hard to learn song. Um, and we welcome anybody who's interested in our virtual choir to speak to me or Sandy or Jeanette. There's several other choir members here, but um, we'd love to welcome everybody back. It was fun to be back this morning. Great. Great. So if you want to sing, we would love to have you. And you don't have to have perfect pitch or anything like that. Billy will guide you through it. And many voices blended together become harmonious, even if you in, in your own ears, it's not perfect already. We're glad to have you. Then with the conclusion of our announcements, let us arrive at that place where we center ourselves. We're going to listen to the choir's anthem, O Se Shalom, as our entry into today's worship. So please place your feet on the floor, relax your bodies, close your eyes if you want to, or enjoy the light of the day, and just listen. Oh, 
was a piece that the choir had prepared last year for us, and it's paired in the video with the peace banners that the youth made during our peace and empowerment camp two years ago. We're, among other things, looking forward to resuming some more engagement for our families and our youth, as well as for our adults. And so we give thanks once again for the gift of music that has continued throughout these times in creative and different ways. We turn you to the call to worship, which you can find either on your screen or you'll find in your program. This is based on the passage from Deuteronomy that we will in fact be studying for the next several weeks. Hear, O people, Adonai Eloheinu, the Lord our God. We shall love our God and with all our souls. We shall keep God's words in our hearts. We will live them in our homes. We will pray them as we lie down and rise up. We bind your love into the work of our hands and the vision of our eyes. We will write it on our doors and gates to remind us in our going out and coming in that we bear the covenant of your love in our very being. We turn now to the prayers of our community. We begin usually with prayers of concern, then we turn to prayers of celebration, and we will also hold a moment of silence. From this morning's gathering at eight o'clock, we lift up the following prayers of concern. A prayer for the friend of Donna named Paul, who is in intensive care. A prayer for Nick. A prayer for Teresa. A prayer for the Prince family. We continue to lift up Scamp, Huntley, Sasha, and her granddaughter, Mary. Barry, Richard, John, and Nancy. I invite now any prayers that you may wish to add to these prayers. And I'm going to ask that you use, there was a microphone. Oh, Bob's got the microphone. Sue's going to use it. So we're going to start in the sanctuary and we'll work our way out. On behalf of Jean Melshrek, her sister Linda is back in the hospital and is not well. So please pray for her sister. Thank you. Were you guys able to hear that in Zoom? Okay, great, great. Any other, okay, Kevin's got a prayer and so um, does Eileen. Ask for prayers for my sister-in-law, Debbie, who was just diagnosed with uterine cancer. Debbie, living with uterine cancer. Um, prayers for me um, to deal with my PTSD and trauma and uh, help from God with that. He's helping me, but it's still very difficult. Um, prayer for protection from evil towards me and that I'll see the good in all people and to see that everyone has a story and everyone has a truth. And um, prayer for Juan, for Gerald, Kevin the janitor, 
and um, for Donna and Irene, and prayer for Reverend Gail and Chris. Thank you, Kevin. Other prayers here in the sanctuary. We have another one from Cheryl. Bob has to actually walk the distance to share the microphone, so. <laughs> um, just prayers for the people of Louisiana, uh, New mm. Jersey, New York, and many other states and areas that uh, suffered um, the effects of Ida. The hurricanes. Thank you, Cheryl. Any other prayers of concern here in the sanctuary? Do we have prayers in the congregation gathered in Zoom? Sandy's got one. Yeah, prayers for relatives of mine. We found out yesterday at least four, could be six, have COVID. Mm -hmm. They are all vaccinated. So let's hope that it doesn't get too bad. Um, but they're not minor symptoms at this point. So. So prayers for those who, you know, unfortunately become rem the reminders to all of us that regardless of being vaccinated or not, uh, COVID is a risk and the vaccination is not proof against contracting it, simply mitigates symptoms we hope for most people. And so it remains part of our world and we remain cautious and careful in the way that we approach the way we live in order to manage it but we pray for sandy's relatives that they will be stable and recover other prayers in zoom i think we're good okay Then I just want to invite any prayers of celebration that we would also add into our congregational prayer, and then we will pray together. Kevin and Eileen are both happy about something here in the sanctuary, so we're going to start with them. Anything you're happy about or grateful for or celebrating, feel free to share. Um, I'll pass the microphone to you. I'm celebrating that uh, my husband David and I had our wedding anniversary this week and went out for dinner and had a great time. For milestones like wedding anniversaries and birthdays and all kinds of special celebrations. Um, I'm grateful when, it, when it's sunny and even when it's raining to hear the sound and hear the nature and sit by the river and the birds and the bugs, some of them. <laughs> some of the bugs. Yeah. <laughs> just to see the, min the little minnows or fish, whatever they are in the <laughs> river, and just to observe nature and enjoy it. Thank you, Kevin. Anybody else have any note of happiness, celebration, gratitude that you want to share out loud today in the sanctuary? OK, then in Zoom. Does anybody wish to express any gratitude or happiness? Go ahead. Um, I do. I just I'm happy that um, our friend Donna Shigalite is home from the, from a long stay in the hospital and did not have to go to a rehab in Florida, which is a dangerous place to be, and is home recovering. And her daughter is with her now to help out. So for for Donna Shigalite's steps towards recovery, we're grateful. Other prayers of celebration or gratitude? No, I think we're good. Yeah, come on, sir. You, you do need the microphone so people I just want to hear you. I just want to make a comment here because I brought my dog to church. <laughs> and this animal is a huge part of my life, but I know most of us have an animal. And I'm looking at my veterinarian right now, Kate. <laughs> And Axel beelined it to her <laughs> when she walked in, even with a mask on. So I was honored and thrilled. And he, some of the things she and he have experienced haven't been totally joyous. So that I was delighted. And the girls are here too. And that was even more exciting. 
But I just want to make this connection, and most of us have this with an animal of some sort. He's now lying down very quietly and just being unbelievably fantastic. And it's so much joy for me to share this place with him and with all of us here. And he's just so peaceful. It's wonderful to have an animal that you can bring anywhere, <laughs> especially to church. So That's thank you, lovely. Reverend Gale, for allowing him to come. <laughs> we're a dog-friendly church, for sure. Last, um, we're auctioning off happiness here. So anybody else have a happiness that they want to share for gratitude? We good in, we're good in Zoom, Sandy? Okay, thumbs up from our Ohio Deacon, Deaconess. Then I ask first for a moment of silence and then we will say prayers together. Oh, holy God, today we focus on the prayer that you gave to your people as both a lesson and a listening. Listen, O oh Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. You call us into oneness, into community where our differences and our diversity become our sources of strength and richness, where you value every member of community, every member of the body of your people, and all the people that live on this world are your children. And so we raise up to you the places where your children live, Louisiana, New York, New Jersey, Afghanistan, so many parts of this world that are burning, flooded, struggling, where people are leaving one home and seeking safety of a different kind. We lift up the names that we have shared this morning and so many other lives who are touched by a diversity of challenges and changes, whether it is mental health or changes in cognition through dementia and Alzheimer's, people who live with Parkinson's, epilepsy, cancer, diabetes, cerebral palsy, changes to things like spinal cords, changes in heart, lung, so many different parts of our bodies that have been affected by age or illness. We are all your children and our bodies are your body. You came into this world to know us intimately and to know what it is like for parts of your body to hurt. And yet these same bodies are full of joy. The bodies of our pets like Axel who recognize those who are their friends, who in turn bring us calm and joy and companionship and connection. The reminder that every person that gathers in your name or the name of holiness and of love, however it is expressed all over the world, we are your children. And you remind us to see in each other the value of human dignity and life and worth. And you remind us also to listen bigger to listen to the groaning and the crying out of the planet itself in these times, to respond as we are able, but to know that in our responding, we are not alone. And that in the midst of the things that feel too big and too overwhelming, this is why you call us into connection and why you fill this world with love in small moments like the minnows and some of the bugs, not all the bugs, and the birds and the wind and the rain and the sun, the changing leaves and the cooling air, the new rhythms of a choir that's returning and school that resumes and lives that have purpose and meaning. In these ways, you give us gifts that help us to celebrate 
and be thankful. And so we turn now to the words that you taught our church, our community, and we say together the Lord's Prayer. And I ask those who are in Zoom, please to unmute so your voices are joined with ours. Our Father, Father who art in heaven, thy kingdom be done, come. thy will, 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 will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Our daily bread. And forgive us our, our sins. Those that we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation. Lead us not into temptation. But deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, power, and the glory, glory forever. forever. Amen. And now we're going to enjoy music by singing together. So if you're in the sanctuary and you're able, feel free to rise for this song. It's hymn number 23 in the hymnal. We gather together and otherwise you'll see the words on the screen. And you should be able to follow along. This is what, what happens when Alan's away for a weekend. We get, um, we pulled down a recording from last month of this music, but the timing in the sanctuary is just funny. Somehow we need Alan's body like to kind of get us moving. So we're not quite in sync with everything, but we're singing together. So all is well. We move then from the hymn to scripture, and for this, I invite both Kevin and Bob to come forward. Kevin will read from Deuteronomy, and Bob will read from Mark. And they're going to come up here right where this microphone is and use this microphone, which I'm turning on. So Kev, you can, got it? So just use the microphone, make sure you get a thumbs up, okay. go ahead. Good morning. Um, this is Deuteronomy um, 6, 4 through 9. Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord alone. You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your might. Keep these words that I am commanding you today in your heart. Recite them to your children and talk about them when you are at home and when you are away, when you lie down and when you rise. Bind them as a sign on your hand, fix them as an emblem on your forehead, and write them in the doorposts of your house and on your gates. Thank you. The second scripture is from Mark 12, verses 28 to 34, entitled The First Commandment. 
One of the scribes came near and heard them disputing with one another. And seeing that, he answered them well. He asked them, which commandment is the first of all? Jesus answered, the first is, hear, O Israel, the Lord our God. The Lord is one. You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your mind and with all your strength. The second is this, you shall love your neighbor as yourself. There is no other commandment greater than these. Then the scribe said to him, you are right, teacher. You have truly said that he is, he is one, and besides him, there is no other. And to love him with all the heart, and with all the understanding, and with all the strength, and to love one's neighbor as oneself. This is much more important than all whole burnt offerings and sacrifices. When Jesus saw that he answered wisely, he said to him, you are not far from the kingdom of God. Please pray with me. May the words of my mouth and the meditations of all of our hearts be acceptable to you, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. So first of all, I want to point out that when we use the call to worship, then when we read from Deuteronomy, we were reading the words that have become the Shema. The Shema is the first word in this passage in Deuteronomy. Shema Ya Israel, Adonai Eloheinu, Adonai Echad. Listen, Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. This prayer is the foundational prayer of the Jewish faith. For those that pray morning and evening in the Jewish tradition, it is an essential portion of every prayer. It's an elemental building block during certain Jewish festivals and holidays. And as I encountered it when I was a hospice and a medical chaplain, it is the prayer that one says at the end of life when one is Jewish and one is dying. One says, Shema Ya Israel, Adonai Eloheinu, Adonai Echad. The prayer takes its name from the first word of that passage, Shema. We translate it initially as, listen, hear, O Israel. But in Hebrew, to listen is more than simply to have something strike your eardrum and become a sound that is transmitted as a signal into your brain and becomes a word that has some meaning. One might think of the command to listen as to listen actively at a minimum. Focus, pay attention. But then in Hebrew, Shema means to respond. When you hear and you understand, you respond. There is a reciprocity when you are asked to listen in Hebrew. Shema Ya Israel. God expects that when they hear, they will respond. That they will obey, that they will listen, that they will make themselves vulnerable and place themselves in connection to holy and redemptive love. Shema. If anybody clicked on any of the links in the meditation that I sent out yesterday about listening, and you were really paying attention, you saw that there was an ASL interpreter who signed the Shema. And I learned so much from that ASL interpreter because he was taking the literal interpretation and changing it to the audience for, to whom he was speaking. And he said, you can translate, listen, 
to those who are deaf because it's not about hearing with your ear. It's about paying attention. And so rather than using the ASL sign that would be to listen, he used the ASL sign that means pay attention. Both hands by the side of the head moving outward. Pay attention. I invite you to watch that video in its fullness and see how he translates just that one line. Shema Ya Israel. Adonai Eloheinu, Adonai Echad. Pay attention, Israel, the Lord, our God, the Lord is one. Today we think about listening. Today we sit with the very first word of this prayer, and for the next few weeks, we will consider other words that are part of this prayer and what they mean to us and why this prayer is so essential to the Jewish faith that when a student, a scribe, walked up to Jesus and his followers and he heard them in debate and he said, Lord, which is the greatest commandment? Jesus spoke the words of the Shema as the first commandment. Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. Jesus drew from his own tradition, from the prayer that was spoken morning and evening during the high holidays and then the moment that someone died. And he called this the greatest, the first of the two commandments. And he paired it with the other, which is to love your neighbor as you love yourself. To love your God with your whole heart and your whole mind and your whole body and the way that you live and the way that you learn to love yourself and others. This was his response and it came from the traditional prayer of his people. This is why for six weeks we will pay attention to the prayer that is the greatest commandment that rests on the lips of the Jewish faithful morning and evening and when they are dying, when they turn their faces to God and they listen to the end of the prayer that says, the Lord is one. And they move from this life towards the oneness with a love that is sacred and holy and will hold all of us ultimately. For today, let us simply remember Shema. Shema, my people, my brothers, my sisters. You don't have to hear with your ears to pay attention, but there's much that is happening in the world around us. God is speaking even now. The question is, are we listening? Are we paying attention? And so often the answer is yes. We are, we are listening. And sometimes we hear so much that it's almost overwhelming. And this is why it is important to remember that this is a prayer not said only by individuals, but by communities. And it is said in connection to God. One scholar reminded us too that this prayer is actually directed towards the Jewish people. Although they say it morning and evening, it is a prayer that is meant to be God speaking to people, opening the path of communication so that first we will hear, that before we charge in with our answers and our thoughts and our worries and our requests, we will pause and we will listen and we will be present to the world around us and to each other and to our own bodies, hearts, and minds and hear what is being spoken. And only then after we have listened, only then, only then will we raise up our voices with our worries and our fears and our joys and our gratitudes. This prayer is to remind us we are not alone. 
we are connected to a holy and a tenacious love that will not let us go, that will find a way to speak into our lives again and again and again until Shema, Shema, my people, we pay attention. Shema. Thanks be to God. Today is a communion Sunday. And so shortly I will be going down to the table where the cup and the bread are sitting and we have a camera focused on that so all can follow along. However, we begin by telling all of you there is no one, no one who is turned away from God's table. We are not in charge of this invitation. We didn't set this table. We didn't make this table. This table belongs to holy love. And if you are told you don't belong, find another place to worship. Find a place that recognizes the fullness of your dignity and your humanity and know that you are loved. And anybody who tells you you don't belong isn't getting it yet. You are welcome at this table. And you are welcome by that right to come to the table, be present to the love, and not partake. Do what is comfortable and right for you. But know you are welcome at this table. I turn us now to the confession, which is taken from a poem by Jan Richardson. You'll find it in the insert in your bulletin, or you'll find it here on your screen. This is to be read in unison. So I invite all of you to lift up your voices together. And for the purposes of this union, unison confession, please, if you would unmute in Zoom, if you wish. God of compassion. We acknowledge the time we have lived too long with the words that others have put into our minds. With the pain they have written to our bodies. With the terror they have burned into our hearts. With the shame they have inscribed to our souls. We know, we know that we know the time we have come to sacrifice, not of our not own, our own when we have when lived with old, 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 cloaked with old, anger, anger, and enshrouded by sorrow. By sorrow. We grieve, we grieve the occasions when we have when lived, we have lived with the alienation, alienation of rather than with association. When we have sought isolation rather than consolation. When our when words, words within, within, have within but have others shut others, shut others out. out. We confess our fear of the dark, the dark and our uncertainty and our uncertainty the light of the light. Of the light. Yet you have placed Yet within us a longing, a longing, a longing for survival, a hunger, a hunger for your wholeness, a yearning, a yearning for your comfort, your comfort and, and a hope for all our healing. Our healing. Bless, Bless our mouths, name our, our words. Name our words. That we may not fear them. them. Our bodies, our bodies that we may cherish them. Our hearts, our hearts, our hearts that we may delight in our longings. And our souls, our souls that, we that we may trust the wisdom of the stories, the stories they hold. Grant, grant us the courage to be touched by you. By you. That when, that when our, our days of weeping are done, we may wear our garments of gladness. See one, See another, one another, another in the light, in the light, of, your the light of your love. And stand, stand, stand together, together in the power of your resurrection. Of your resurrection. In the name of the risen Christ, we pray. Amen. 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 Brothers and sisters, the love that makes a place for all people loves you just as you are the way you come into that presence today and in this moment. And what hurts you and how you may have hurt others, what separates you from that love and from others and from yourself, it is forgiven. 
by the grace that sets your place at this table and desires your presence in this kingdom among God's children. We turn now to the Sursum Corda and Sanctus, which you'll find either on your screen or also in the insert. God be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the sky. Let us give thanks to God most high. It is very meet, right, and our bounden duty that we should at all times and in all places give thanks unto you, everlasting God. Therefore, with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, we laud and magnify your glorious name, evermore praising you and singing or reciting. Holy, 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 holy. Lord God Almighty, God Almighty. Early, early in the morning, early in the morning song shall rise, our song shall rise to thee. Holy, 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 holy merciful, merciful and, mighty. and mighty. God in three persons, God in three persons. Three persons. Blessed, blessed Trinity. Trinity. And now, brothers and sisters, I'm stepping down to the table that has communion on it, and I'm bringing my everything with me. If you haven't already done so, please do gather your bread and your beverage. We call down God's blessing on the cup and on the bread. We ask for God's holy presence to transform our lives as these elements of a meal are transformed into a gift that changes us and invites us back again and again and again into the company of this redemptive, fierce love that will always speak into our lives. Brothers and sisters, you'll find a little wafer if you're using our tiny communion set inside the top of the cup. I'm demonstrating that for everybody. But whether you're at home or here at the table, I have a little biscuit. On the night that Christ gathered with his beloved friends, he served them. He washed their feet. He tried to break to them and help them understand the news that he was facing death. And that love would return beyond all things and continue because they loved each other and he had shown them how to love each other and that they would become the body of Christ, and that body through the stories and the ministry and the love that they carried out into the world would flow down to us here where we are, whether we are in God's home or our own homes gathered. And so when we break this bread, we remember. We remember the stories, and more than that, we remember that love is present then as it is present now, and it speaks now into our lives as it spoke even then. Brothers and sisters, take of the bread, eat, and when you do so, remember the one whose love changed your lives forever. turned off the microphone so I wouldn't chew in people's ears. In the same way, Christ filled the cups of those who were with him. He poured out not only the fruit of the vine, but also the love and the stories that were carried in that love. And now those stories are the vessels as our bodies are the vessels of that love. And that love has been poured out because love is too big to stay contained in your body or your life. 
It is measured by how it is shared and how it flows outward. And so now, this morning, when you take and you drink, do so in remembrance of a love that is shared again and again and again. Axel the dog is interested in participating in this activity. Brothers and sisters, you'll find the statement of thanksgiving either in your program or on the screen. We are not alone. God made us. We are not alone. We have each other. Can anything separate us from the love of Christ? Can trouble, Can trouble pain, pain, or persecution? persecution? No. In all these things, we win an overwhelming victory through the one whose love for us is proven. Neither death, nor, neither life, death nor life, neither messenger neither of heaven messenger nor of ruler heaven, on, earth, on earth, neither what happens today, what happens today nor, nor, what may may happen, nor what may happen tomorrow, neither power, neither power, from, power from high, from high nor power, power from power below, below nor anything, nor anything else, else has power has to separate, power to separate us, us from the love of God. God. Thanks, be to, Thanks God. be to God. Amen. We turn now to music to once again remind us of celebration. If you are in the sanctuary, I invite you to rise and turn to page 311. Let us break bread together. Otherwise, if you're in Zoom, you'll find it on your screen. I don't know, somehow the sanctuaries were just not in sync with the music. I'm not quite sure what we need. Hmm. Music committee meeting sometime in the future about how to make figure out the timing. I don't know. How are at home? Were you guys able to sing along? Yeah, they're all they're all fine. They're they're fine. It's all of us. <laughs> in the sanctuary, they're saying it did say have mercy on us. <laughs> oh, okay. All right, separate conversation. Thank you. All right, we're going to turn now to offering. Thank you, God, for the gift of laughter and patience. <laughs> we remind each other that part of our commitment in the work of being a community is to hold each other up in the ways that we give. People give of their time to become deacons, to sing in the choir, to prepare a little bit of refreshments for us afterwards, to help with the audio visual. There's so many ways that people help. And one of those ways that you support us is through your giving. And so whether you choose to make a donation through jxncc.org 
or whether you take an envelope and put it in the basket or the plates out front or you mail something in, however it is that you do this, know that you help keep us healthy in very vital ways and permit us to continue to be part of the valley-wide regional response to things that are happening in our part of the world, as well as I did point out last week through missions, making differences in places that have been hit by hurricanes and earthquakes internationally and nationally. So we give thanks for your generosity and simply remind you that it remains an important part of how we are present to each other as a community. And with that, we turn to the benediction. If you want to stand up again, feel free. Next week.